<laughs> I have a feeling that Montreal Canadiens fans are going to eat this one up. So, a few weeks ago, we had ourselves a very interesting segment on the Sportsnet TV broadcast, where, in the midst of one of their period intermissions, you had yourselves former NHLer Luke Gazdick go out there and talk in a pretty harsh way about Montreal Canadiens' first overall pick, Uri Slavkovsky. Now, if you remember what exactly it was that Gazdick said, essentially he was going out there and talking about how the Montreal Canadiens probably have it in their best interests to play Slavkovsky on the fourth line. This comment was made back in January, and I remember it was a really big deal when it was said, because in this time frame, Yuri Slavkovsky was slowly building himself back up. Everybody kind of acknowledges that he has had a considerable amount of growth in terms of his on-ice profile from the beginning of the season up until now, and so to see some of the guys on live national television saying, yeah, that guy deserves to be in the fourth line. Like, his numbers aren't great, why is he this high up in the lineup? It was a very ignorant perspective, and coming from somebody that you could definitely tell has not really been paying too much attention to the Canadiens, to Slavkovsky, and the way his development has been going. So, a lot of Habs fans went out there and kind of, eh, they went out there and taunted Gazdick a little bit. You've got Habs on Reddit that was making a few tweets over the past few weeks talking about this. Here's one from January 15th, for example. Slavkovsky has as many points in his last 12 games as Sportsnet's Luke Gazdick, who told him to go to the AHL in his entire career. That's kind of the stuff that we're seeing here. Well, leave it until February 6th, 2024, when we see the Montreal Canadiens suit up against the Washington Capitals for Slavkovsky to go out there and prove everybody wrong. And that includes Luke Gazdick. You see, to help us out into this conversation, let's go over the tail of the tape. There's a story here. I wanted to explore this with you a little bit. This was the tweet made by the Montreal Canadiens heading into yesterday's game against the Capitals. The Habs had a first line of Cole Caulfield, Nick Suzuki, and Yuri Slavkovsky. But every other line after that, admittedly, was uh, kind of bad. You got Yoel Armia, Gignac, and Anderson as your second line, Pearson, Evans, and Yelonen as your third line, and then Pezzetta, Condota, and Harvey Pennard as the fourth line. My goodness, that is not a good forward core, in the slightest. You know, we said that Gignac was going to be the Sean Monaghan replacement in that video a few days ago. I didn't think it was going to be that blunt. He's literally a second-line player in the NHL now, after just being in the AHL a week ago. So, there's Gignac for you. But the Montreal Canadiens, with this lineup, were still able to make it work, and they ended up beating the Washington Capitals with a score of 5-2. to two. And not to mention, the fact that you had a boatload of production and a really good amount of movement from guys on the top line in Cole Caulfield, Suzuki, and of course, Slavkovsky. Because not only did Slavkovsky score himself two goals, but some of these markers looked so good, and they were part of, you could say, Slavkovsky's hypothetical mixtape. If he had to make a highlight package of Slavkovsky's best moments throughout his NHL career, you'd probably see the one-timer goal that he put in the back of the net yesterday on that highlight reel. You'd probably see some of the plays that he's been making as of late. Because Yara Slavkovsky, the first goal that he scored, was a very nice little drop pass feed given out to Slav, where he walks right in on the left side, drags it, shoots it, and it's in the back of the net. But the second goal that he scored on the power play was just a beauty. It's Mike Matheson at the point, top of the umbrella, who finally recognizes that Yara Slavkovsky is a passing option. So he sends it to the right side, and Slavkovsky, just like the Alex Ovechkin he is playing against, absolutely hammers it. What a slap shot one-timer that Slavkovsky possesses there. It goes perfectly under the blocker, it's in the back of the net, Add to that the final goal, the 5-2 goal, and the Canadians take this game with a pretty convincing score. Yuri Slavkovsky had two goals. And if you go over to his total game log, sure, you could see that he's got 22 points in 50 games played on pace for roughly 36 points over a full 82-game season, but that gets a lot better when you cut out the first parts of the year. Here's what Stat News went out there and said, Yuri Slavkovsky has 7 goals, 8 assists, and a plus-minus of minus 8 in 21 games since December 16th, 2023. 
So within the past month and a half-ish, Slavkovsky has been under a point per game with 15 points in 21 games. Okay. But if you segment it a little bit further and you go back to January 15th, Yaroslavkovsky since then has five goals and two assists and a plus minus of minus eight in eight games since January 15th, 2024. The two goals tonight, plus the goal against Pittsburgh and then the assist against the Islanders, not to mention other points sporadically placed against Colorado, New Jersey, and Boston, Yuri Slavkovsky has gone out there and started to be a consistent point producer. Sometimes he has been moved around in the lineup, but for the most part, him being part of this top line with Caulfield and Suzuki has been just an amazing fit, and it's one that we've been seeing throughout the course of the year. It's one that you could debate why did they even separate it in the first place, but now Slavkovsky is playing on a line that is playing like a first gosh darn line. When was the last time the Habs had a legit bona fide first line that played like a first line? You can't even say during the playoff run that they had that because I'm sorry, Dino Gallagher and Tatar was more of a shutdown line rather than a top scoring, high flying offensive producing line. They didn't get any points in the finals run and I get it that was a very peculiar set of circumstances. They had a system and a formula that worked and allowed them to get that far. Are, but when was the last time the Canadians had a first line that moves, plays, and scores like Caulfield, Suzuki, and Slavkovsky have been? It's been a long time, and maybe that's just opportunity for other fans of other teams to go out there and take the piss out a little bit at the Montreal Canadiens. Ha ha, you guys are clamoring over a guy who is under a point per game in his past month's worth of production. That's funny. Very, very funny. And sure, while what Slavkovsky is doing is not like, you know, generational, he's not Connor McDavid for crying out loud, it's certainly a lot better than what some of the insiders and coverage people on Sportsnet were saying earlier in the week. Here is what Habs on Reddit said yesterday. Fun fact, Yuri Slavkovsky scored two goals tonight. Sportsnet's Luke Gazik, who said that Slavkovsky should play in a fourth-line role a few weeks ago on live television, scored five goals in his 147 career NHL games. Ay ay ay. Everybody is going out there and talking about this. And I mean, looking at the replies, there's a lot of angst over here, so I could totally see why this has gained as much traction as it has. But in order to help us out a little bit more in regards to the Canadians and the Capitals game, what we had seen out of Slavkovsky, let's go over to the Canadian sub because the post game thread of the Knights' action against Washington does have some good discussion points from Habs fans. Slavkovsky has literally become a different human over the past little while. He's becoming himself, Matya BCX says. Slowly but surely, he's getting the confidence we saw him having in Slovak national team. He is an absolute force. He can dominate the game at times. You can't tell me he hasn't. Another comment goes out there and says, Honestly, out of all his talents, Slavkovsky's biggest one is probably his ability to learn and adapt. He's completely transformed his game in like three months. It's pretty unbelievable. Yeah, he's got that hockey brain and he's absorbing stuff all the time. He's improved so much, it's hard to believe. Another comment goes into a deeper dive as to everything else. Ukrainian Habs says, Good. Lots of positives tonight. A good overall game from the Habs and some standouts for sure. Yuri Slavkovsky had utter rockets on both goals, and most importantly, that shot is improving as the season goes on. He's getting it off much quicker. He's having a great season, and it's only going to get better. There also are some comments on Mike Matheson, Montembeau, Gignac, and then there are some bad things like, hey, I just for the life of me cannot see a GM trade for Tanner Pearson. No disrespect, he's had a good career, but man, I just don't see what he brings. Nitpicky in such a good game, but I noticed him just kind of standing around a lot. And yeah, you know, I'm going to go out there and say it as a Vancouver Canucks fan, Tanner Pearson doesn't really do much anymore, so... Yeah, sayonara. I'm happy with Casey DeSmith on Vancouver, but either way, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about how Yuri Slavkovsky is finally starting to prove everybody wrong. The numbers over the past few weeks are starting to back that up, and the way he is controlling play, scoring goals, and setting things up for other guys on the Canadiens in a first-line role, mind you, is certainly a sight to behold. Is he gonna be a Connor McDavid, Jack Hughes, Rasmus Dahlin? Probably not. But if you can get a serviceable 40, 50, maybe 60 point NHL player in this realm and a guy who could control the play like he has been lately this season, then I'm pretty sure Canadians fans have a lot more to cheer for over the next few years. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about Slavkovsky and his play last night. The two goals against Washington, how he's proving everybody, including Luke Gajdik from the Sportsnet crew, wrong. I hope you enjoyed this Vrishar Shorosanayanayan. And... Bye.